There are various ways to capture images. One very popular method is to use astronomical imaging software such as NINA, Voyager and others. The configuration is slightly different, it's actually a lot easier because we are using the StarSense AutoGuider to do all the guiding and in fact all the control of the mount. In this case I have a CGX mount with a RASA 8. I will show you an example of how to do this. I'm now in the CPWI software and I am first going to quickly configure the StarSense Auto Guide. So important is of course you will enable guiding. Guiding should always be on if you have that option. Makes it very convenient especially when you do mosaics or meridian flips. I'm also going to say auto meridian flip. So that means that our astro imaging software is only capturing image sequences and doing nothing else really. So let's jump straight into Nina. I'm going to try this on the North America Nebula. So I'm just going to type in North. Hopefully that's enough for search. And there we go. That's the North America Nebula. As you can see, I'm very close to the meridian and that's where the meridian flip takes place. That's the highest point. And then it goes to the west side. So I'm just going to say set to framing assistance. Let's see what it looks like. So that is the framing as the imager is configured right now. So I'm just going to say let's determine the rotation angle. So it's taking a quick image and then going to calculate the rotation angle. And here you can see that is the approximate framing. Now you can shift this a little bit. So let's, let's shift it like this so that I can frame this nicely. Hopefully Nina uh, calculated it correctly. Sometimes it makes some errors. So just be aware of that. So I just shifted it a little bit and let's add this sequence to the target now. Here we go. So I'm just going to say let's add this to legacy sequencer to make it really simple. There's a North American nebula. I'm just going to say let's go for 10 images here and let's make them two minutes long. So I'm just going to type in here 120 seconds and I've actually got a dual band filter in this case. Spinning is one. I'm not going to dither. It's not important here. Slew to target. Yes. Now I don't want to center the target because that would mean that my imager would plate solve and then allow the software to do the centering. I don't actually want that. I want the StarSense Auto Guider to take care of it. Is yes, cooling I've got on, but I have the meridian flip on off because again, the StarSense Auto Guider takes care of everything. As you can see, we're just capturing images. That's it. It's really that simple. So all I need to do now is to start the sequence. And as you can see, the telescope is now slewing. And that should have it centered and now the sequence should start fully automatic. And it is doing that. And we just have to wait until we see the first image in two minutes. And it looked like the sequence started a little bit early, so this can happen. The guider wasn't quite ready yet. So let's have a look quickly and see what happened there. So you can see it has been guiding, so the next image should be a lot better. We could have avoided this previous error by just putting in a delay before the image sequence starts. Typically, a delay between 30 seconds and one minute would have been appropriate. Well, that has made it so easy. I can just go to bed now, in fact, and let this run. Even the meridian flip won't worry me anymore. You can also put multiple targets in because the StarSense Auto Guider will, when you jump from one target to the next, for example, if we were to go from the North American Nebula now to the Andromeda, which is just rising, it would just start guiding again as long as you leave the permanent guiding on enabled. So just enable all those options and you'll be fine and imaging will become so much easier and fun again. And enjoy it.